Today's video is a little different. Instead of my usual step-by-step -step tutorials, I'm gonna be sharing my makeup trial for a wedding that I will be attending later this week. I wanted to do a trial of the products and the application, and I thought that it would be fun to share it with you as well. So this video is a little bit more casual than usual. However, if you enjoy tutorials that are more step-by-step -step and you are new to the Makeup Chair channel, then I might suggest hitting the subscribe button below. It's totally free. And if you're already subscribed, then thank you and welcome back. Now let's get started. So I moisturized my face and applied my eye cream about 20 minutes ago. So my skincare has had time to settle on my skin and we are ready for an eyeshadow primer. The job of an eyeshadow primer is to prevent the natural oils on the skin and the lid from breaking down the eyeshadow, basically creates a barrier, which is especially important for weddings or long days and parties. So I'm going to be applying the primer from the lash line all the way up to the brows. Now I like to use a damp sponge to blend out my primer rather than using my fingertips. The sponge blends the primer much more evenly and then creates a much better base. So I highly recommend it. Give it a try and let me know if it works for you too. Now, once the primer is on the lid, I'm going to be applying a cream eyeshadow as a second base. So I'm going to be applying this with a small brush right at the lash line area, or if you want, you can open your eyes, look forward and see the little area that peeks out still. Basically, this will be the starting point for our smoky eye. So we want to add a lot of depth right at the lash line. And I love how easy this product goes on. It's one of the main reasons that I wanted to use it. This little pot is like magic. It's like powdery, but like creamy and like buttery and smooth, but then it sets perfectly. So it's like a cream to powder, but like it's, it's like, I, don't, I can't explain it. I've never used anything like it before. It is just beautiful to use. Highly recommend it. So once we have that as our base point right at the lash line, I'm next going to be applying a medium nude shade slightly above the cream. I want to apply this just to give it a little bit more fade and to start off our smoky eye. So this is about one shade lighter than the creamy base, but about one shade darker than my skin tone. Now we've kept this mostly on the lid. So before I blend up any further, I actually want to take a lighter shade and set underneath my brows. So the primer grips hold of eyeshadow. So to prevent any of that darker shade that I will be applying next from drifting up too high, I'm just gonna apply this lighter shade in that area to prevent too much grip. So now I'm taking my favorite blending brush and I'm going to be using this shade that's at least one shade darker than my skin tone. And I'm going to be applying this in the crease area and also onto the brow bone area, but avoiding the area directly under my brows. And this is going to sweep really nicely over and back. So I'm doing soft sweeping motions, keeping my eyes open. And as I'm blending, you can actually see where the primer has gripped hold of this dark shadow. We have a little bit of a line forming. That's okay because we can softly blend out this harsh line, but I don't like having to apply my lighter shades last. I find layering a little bit of lightness, then my dark, and then a little bit of light again if I need to, just adds a slightly better finish. It's very subtle, but I feel like it does help, particularly if you're getting ready in a hurry or it's an early morning and you're tired, applying your kind of lighter shades there first will just prevent you from having to fix up anything later. So I'm taking a small brush and this is so cute and I'm going to be applying the darkest shadow that we're gonna be using for this look. Now I'm looking slightly down in a mirror to see where my crease area is and I'm adding this to add some depth to the look. So I'm sweeping this kind of in that area, quite low, because we don't want to blend it up too high. Our medium shade is always higher than our darker one. And I'm just blending this deep in that crease area. This is to create that kind of smoky look and a little bit more depth and darkness. So instead of going from a dark to light, which is what we did on the lid, we're kind of going from light to dark in the crease in the brow bone area. 
Using that same brush, I'm taking a warmer eyeshadow and I'm blending this kind of around everything just to create a nice fade. Now, I actually might switch the shadow out for my blush instead. I haven't quite decided on what blush I'm going to be using on my face, so I just kind of use this temporarily. I'm also thinking I might do a cut crease, maybe just on the inner corner. I'm not 100% sure. So I just applied that lighter shadow just on that inner corner just to kind of see what it would look like. I kind of like the darkness on that outer edge, so I don't know if I want it to be too bright on the inner corner. But what do you guys think? Let me know. Next, I applied Invisible Liner, which is a very, very thin amount of liner right at the lash line. I do have a video coming up on this very shortly, but it's kind of something that you can't see, but just adds a little bit more depth. I also applied my first layer of mascara before we're going to move on to applying some pencil liner. So this next tip is great for photographs. It makes such a difference, but it's so subtle in real life as well. So I'm applying a dark pencil on the upper waterline. So I'm going to look downwards and I'm applying this on the upper rim of the eye. It just adds so much more depth and smokiness to the eye, but it's so subtle and almost hidden in a way. I'm also going to be using this on the outer third of my eye because when I get a little bit tired, my eyes kind of droop. So applying this darker shadow on that outer third only on the lower water line, it kind of lifts the eyes a little bit, prevents them from looking too dragged downwards, kind of enclosing this area. And then on the other two thirds, I'm actually going to apply a lighter pencil. So this should brighten the eyes while also lifting on the outer corner which is another great thing for photographs, if you have eyes like mine. I'm gonna clean up around the eyes and the brow bone and apply some falsies. And to add to that lifted look, I'm going to keep the outer edge quite sharp and lifted, so working upwards. This is going to bring my eyes closer together because they're slightly wide set, while also preventing that droopiness that I can get in photographs when I'm quite tired. Now for under the eyes, I want it kind of clean, but I also want some definition. I still haven't quite decided on what I want to do here. I just decided to use a little bit of the product underneath that we've already applied earlier. So whatever's left over on the brush, I kind of swept this underneath the eyes. I'm not sure if I want to go for like a really clean kind of vintage look under the eyes or if I want to go a little smoky. So let me know what you guys think. What should I do? But that is the finished look for now. I wore this for a few hours and I found the eyeshadows were perfect, but the liner needed to be fixed up just uh, about five hours afterwards, just to keep it kind of, you know, a little bit more pristine. But aside from that, everything stayed in place. I also love the fact that I can apply a little bit more of that cream if I wanted to add a little bit more smokiness because it's great for layering. But I would love to know if you have any suggestions of what doesn't or does work for you. As always, my friends, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. You are doing the best you can, and I will see you in the next one.